Hello again everyone, and welcome to another video on Scratch 3.0. In this video, we're going to be making a simple calculator, and I'm going to show you how it works first, and then we'll walk through the process step by step of how to make it. So this is what our calculator will do. We'll press our green flag, it's going to ask us what the numbers are that we're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So I'm going to give it the first number, I'm just going to make up a number, 7, 27, and then it's going to ask, do you want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? I'm going to multiply. Then it's going to tell me the answer is, and it'll tell me what the answer is. All right? Simple enough. And it's pretty basic, but it gets into some really useful and interesting concepts. So we are going to now go over to this screen, and we're going to build that from huh, scratch. So we'll click Create. And in this project, it really doesn't matter what your sprite is. So if you want to just leave Scratch Cat, that's totally fine. If you want to get a new sprite, that's also fine. But the sprite isn't really the important part. We're going to be uh, focusing more on the code part today. So the first thing that you probably saw is that our sprite needs to have an event when the green flag clicked, so that we always know when our program starts. And then the sprite needs to ask us what the two numbers that we're going to be using are. And I want to take a little bit of time to do this because we're going to be using this block called the answer block. And the answer block is really, really, really useful in Scratch. And I want to show you a little bit how it works. So we're going to drag this ask what is your name block and wait out. And we'll change that to say what is the first number. Okay. And then we're going to go to our variables and we need to make some variables for this program. Now we've made variables before if you've watched all the other Scratch videos I've done, but if you haven't, basically making a variable is essentially making a bucket that we can store a number inside. So we're gonna make two variables. We're gonna call it number one, and I'm gonna make a second variable called number two. Just like that. And you'll see them here, right now they're both set to zero, totally fine, okay? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to use this answer block, uh, and we're going to set each of the variables to uh, whatever answer we give to this question. So for now, I'm going to un or I'm sorry, I'm going to check this box right here, and so we'll see answer pop up here as well. Right now, it's just an empty value. Answer has no value. So we're going to go to variables again, and we are going to set number one to the answer that we give. Now, I want you to watch something here. I'm going to click the green flag. It says, what is the first number? I'll just type in 5. And you'll see that my answer is now 5, and my number 1 is now 5. Now, the cool part about the answer block is you can do that multiple times. An answer will always be whatever the last answer you gave is. So I'm going to duplicate this. And for this one, I'm going to say, instead of what is the first number, what is the second number? And I'm going to set number two to answer. Now I'll press my green flag. It's going to ask, what is the first number? I'll type in four this time. Notice that my number one is now four, my answer is now four. It's asking, what is the second number? Well, I'll type in seven. Notice that my number two is now seven, and my answer is now seven. This is really important. Answer is a super useful block because it allows us to set all these other variables based on whatever our last answer was to a question. Okay, so now that we've talked about that answer block a little bit, we need to actually now go and add a third variable. And this is going to be the operation that we're going to be doing with the calculator. So either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So let's go back down to variables. We'll make another variable. And just for the clarity, I'm going to call it operation. You can call it whatever you want, but it's often helpful to name your variables something where if you come back in a week or two, it's really easy to remember what that variable is being used for. So we're going to call this operation, and we're going to go to our sensing again. We're going to drag one more ask block out that says, do you want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Make sure to put a question mark because we are asking a question. We need proper punctuation. And now 
we are going to grab another one of these set blocks from our variables tab. And this time we're going to set our operation to whatever our answer is. So notice that I have an operation over here. It's currently set to zero. But if I do my first number is four, my second number is six, and then I say something like divide, notice that my operation now will say divide. Okay? I'm moving this up a little bit because we're going to be adding a bunch of code down here. So now we need to go to our control blocks. And we're going to need four of these if-thens. I'm going to add one and then we're just going to duplicate it three more times. Okay? So if our operation equals whatever we put in here, so divide, add, subtract, multiply, or divide, uh, then we want to do that operation. So let's take that step by step. So we'll grab an if block, and then we'll grab an operators. It has an equal sign. And on the one side of that, we're going to go down to our variables, grab the operation button, or whatever you named it. And on the other side, you're going to type in the name of the operation that you're doing. So I'm going to do them in order, add, subtract, multiply, divide. It's really important that whatever you type here matches whatever you type here. So if you did add with a capital A, then do add with a capital A here. If you did addition instead of add, so like do you want to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, make sure you type addition here. Because this and this have to match so that whoever's using the calculator knows what to type. Uh, and I'll show you why that's really important in just a minute. So if our operation equals equals add, then what we want to do, let's go to our looks, and we're going to say something like, answer is, put a colon there, grab another say block. Inside that say block, go back down to your operators uh, and find the operator that has whatever symbol you're using. So in this case, it's the plus sign. And in uh, the two ovals here, you're going to just put a number one and a number two from the variables tab. And you'll notice that you have all these little ovals. So now, if I press my green flag, I can type in four, and six, and then it only is going to work for addition because that's all we've coded so far. I'm going to type add, and the answer is going to be 10. Now, watch what happens if I do this again. I'll use four and six again. And if I do add ADD. So that time, it still works. Okay. What happens if I do this? Now it fails. So Scratch is smart enough to know that add uh, capital A and add lowercase a are the same word. Not all programs are that smart. So you have to be a little bit careful when you do that. Scratch actually is, is pretty forgiving about that sort of thing. But there are programs out there that if you're trying to code and you have an add with a lowercase and then you do an add with an uppercase here, those are not going to be the same thing. The computer will get very confused about what you're trying to do. So keep that in mind uh, and make sure that you're giving your users enough information that they know what they're supposed to be inputting or typing into these uh, answer blocks. So now that we've added this add, pun intended, uh, we can actually just duplicate this block, put it below, not inside, and we're going to type this, subtract, we'll take this out, so take the operator out, and put the new operator in, take the same ovals, and there we go. So now we have it for subtraction. And we can do this over and over again for multiplication and division. And I'm going to do it one more time for divide, and then I'll go back and do the actual operators. Okay, so I'll drag these bubbles out, get rid of that, and you can be doing this while I'm doing this as well. And obviously, if you need to pause the video, please feel free to do so. So once you have all four of those operators done, though, then you can start testing your program for real. 
So we'll type in, this time I'm going to do some division, so I'm going to type in something like 200 divided by 10. It should tell me the answer is 20. Okay, so this is basically the project. Uh, once you have this part, you're effectively done. Now, if you wanted to make this more complicated, you certainly can. So for example, if you wanted to say, uh, have another ask block here that says, what is the third number, right? And so you go, you just duplicate this part, you do what is the third number, you set number three, you make a new variable, set number three to answer, and then you have something like, say, number one plus number two, and then you go and drag another operator in there, and so you'd have number one plus number two plus a number three here. That's, that's totally fine. You can do that sort of thing um, if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, if you're happy with the program as it is, that's great. Um, you might even, if you get really, really inspired, you might even make another variable to say something like, uh, instead of asking what's the first number, what's the second number, you could ask how many numbers are there. You could make a variable called number of numbers or something like that and say, okay, my number of numbers is three. And then you could say for or uh, while or repeat until, that's how Scratch phrases it, uh, you have repeated through number one, number two, number three, ask what's the first number, what's the second number, what's the third number, and so on. That would be a lot more complicated, and you would have to be pretty creatively uh, working within the limitations of Scratch to do that, but I think it's probably possible to do. And if you do end up doing something like that, I'd love to see it. But for now, this is where we're going to end this, because I don't want to make it a super long video. Uh, and the goal here is just to really get you exploring these answer blocks, as well as using some of the operators and seeing some of the things that you can do with math and things like that in Scratch pretty easily. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have fun with your calculator. I hope that you use it to help you with your homework. And uh, I'll see you for the next video.